Hi there, it's me again, Pastor Butch. And China. In really, and welcome to Digital Gospel, a 30 minute word of encouragement from the Bible and from Community, Community Christian, Christian Center. Center. This evening, I would like to greet all my family, my friends, my parents, all the way from Mignanilia, and members of PTC or Pickup Truck Club, and different biker groups here in Cebu, like MSCP, XRCPI, XR Riders. Real Bros, Outsider MC Mactan Chapter, Watch Enthusiast, Rolex Club, Mga Kuya sa Kesmic, Kadaugan sa Mactan Eagles Club, and PNP MRP Police and Pastors Moral Recovery. I would like also to greet all our members from Community Christian Center, our core pastors, and our senior pastor Bishop Edgar L. Bantigi and Reverend Edna R. Bantigi. I would like to greet all our family and friends from Christ Faith Fellowship and to all who are watching this, mayong gabi ilin yung tanan. I would like to mention also Brother Mike uh, Hudson and Pastor Mike Chua. I like to, um, tonight we have a very special guest. So stay online and stay tuned and may God always bless you. We love you and see you soon. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Jonathan Butch, for um, allowing me to come here and join with you and to share the Word of God in this um, Digi Gospel. Thank you so much also for all of you who are listening to us. I hope and I pray that you will finish it. We end up until 6.30 and I hope and I pray that the words of the Lord that you will hear tonight will give hope and will give um, joy into your heart. Uh, before I begin, let us pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your love that has sustained us even until now. And Lord, as we um, listen to your word, we thank you, Lord, that these words will be from you and not from me. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that your revelation your understanding and your conviction will be upon each and every one of us. Lord, we just want to give you the glory. We just want to give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, lately, there is um, a chapter in Psalms that we are trying to, our kids and, 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 and us are trying to memorize, and that's in Psalms chapter 46. And it says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place, where the Most High dwells. And that is in Psalms 46, verse 4. Um, I really like the verse because it says, there is a river whose streams make glad. Jesus said, I am the river of life. And anyone who drinks it will never thirst again. Will never, never thirst again. I believe that Jesus is not saying about physical thirst, but God is telling us more than the physical thirst that we need. I believe it is more of the spiritual. I believe it's more of the emotional. Right now, um, a lot of times people are depressed. They are having this, um, you know, the feeling of frustration, the feeling of incompleteness. And people tend to look for this assurance, look for this um, approval from around them, from the people, from um, work, or from anyone. And a lot of times, they end up frustrated. Why? Because these people cannot satisfy the assurance or the approval that th this person is asking for. I believe this is the kind of thirst that Jesus is trying to say. And because Jesus is the river of life, He is the source of life, He is the source of everything, I believe that if we just come to Him, we will never thirst again. We will never get tired of doing things. We will never be burnt out. We will never be, yeah, probably 
we will be burnt out, we will get tired, but just like an eagle, we will fly. We will fly and we will soar high above our limitation. Not because we are good enough, not because we are mightier than other people, but it is because of the love of God that sustains us. Now, God's stream of love will make us glad. He will make us glad. The streams of love that comes from the Lord will always make us glad. Why? Why is the love of God gives us gladness? Why is the love of God gives us the assurance? When I was young, um, I thought that because I grew up as a pastor's kid, my parents were pastors, I thought that knowing God is enough. But then God brought me to a realization that it's not about what you know. It's not about how you know it, but it is about your personal relationship with the Lord. It is your personal experience with the Lord that will give you, that will sustain you, that will, you know, give you the push to move on. Because every time you get tired, every time you fall, God will remind you, these are the things that I have done to you in the past. And so every time I remember this, every time God put into my remembrance what he has done to me, how he saved me from being spiritually dead, how he, you know, give me life, not just because he died on the cross. Okay, we know that. We know that God, Jesus, gave his life for us. But it's not enough. There should be an experience within your life that you can really say, it is because of what God has done in my life that I will give my commitment to the Lord, that I will give my wholehearted love to the Lord. Now, let me remind us all that the love of God that streams from the river, that flows from the river, is number one stable his love is stable as i have said we do not need to have the approval from other men why because the love of god is stable it is never changing it is never changing i always remember you know i uh this i believe this is a revelation that god has given me if you if you read from Gen genesis chapter one to revelation and even connect it until the present time God's faithfulness God's love God's commitment to you has never changed and that is why our God the love of God is so stable in our lives you know when God created the heaven and the earth in Genesis I believe he created it with his love when he formed the, the dry land when he placed the clouds in the sky, the, the fish in the sea, when he placed all those things, when God created man and, 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 and woman, there was love in it. Why? Because you can see all around us, they are beautifully made. The creation of God is beautifully made. And so I believe he created it with so much love. And why I say it's stable? Because even if man sinned against God, even if man disobeyed God, still his love was there. His love was there. He could have erased Adam and Eve. He could have made another garden, but he did not make, make it. Instead, he said, you have to pay for the consequences, you know? But then God was still gracious. His love sustains Adam and Eve even until now. Now, at present, at present, we are here. We are alive. 
we have the joy we have the strength we have the air we have everything we need maybe not much but we have everything we need we can still eat and we are in good health that is because of the love of God yes God may be angry God can be angry remember when the time when uh, the people uh, the people of Israel together with Moses you know when God was so angry with these people and he caused the ground to shake he was very angry at that moment that many people fall into the ground many people died but there were still who were alive that alone shows the love of God during Noah he could have killed everyone he could have wiped up everyone but still God gave rainbow to Noah expressing his commitment expressing his love towards the people God's love is so wonderful in the New Testament we know how people were so wicked how people disrespect the Son of God but yet God is still gracious so number one thing about the love of God the love of God is stable it has never changed from generation to generation he said I am the same yesterday today and forever so let us be encouraged that God's love that's that God's love for us is always unchangeable it is stable second the love of God is you know it it um, it includes the totality of our whole being God will not say ah because you are deaf or because you are paralyzed or because you are blind I will not love you anymore no God loves all of us the same there's no favoritism God loves everyone I remember Moses Moses when God called Moses Moses said no Lord I cannot go and save your people because I even have difficulty in speaking you know but God said no go there I have chosen you to save my people go there God's love will not choose anyone God's love does not require perfection God's love includes the totality of our whole being regardless of what we have regardless of what situation we have God's love includes you so whatever is your situation right now whatever is your disability right now God can still use you God can still use you God can still use you to share his love to other people God can still use you David when David killed Goliath he was still a little boy so you see the love of God chooses no one he can use anyone he can use regardless of age regardless of capability regardless of talent regardless of your deficiency limitation it doesn't matter God's love God's love includes totality of your being probably in yourself you have other weaknesses you have strength and you will say oh my weakness is like this maybe God will not use me no God can still use you to express his love to other people so be encouraged God will use you God will use you another thing God will God's love will restore you do you know that his love will restore you 
a lot of times um, we feel broken a lot of times um, the experiences of life you know the, the pain we leave a scar and uh, this scar somehow will, will give us the, the feeling that eh, I cannot be effective anymore because you know I'm broken but you know what brokenness is what God wants in us it is only when we are broken that God can use you it is only when we are broken that God can use us why because in our brokenness in our weakness God's strength will be magnified and so don't don't mind if you have a broken past kinsa may wala all of us kinsa may wala broken nga past every one of us i believe many of us are even hiding so many you know brokenness so many um we feel nga mga unpure things that we have done in the past things that we are not proud to share and i believe all of us no one is exempted but believe me brothers and sisters god's love can restore you he has restored me he has restored my mind he has restored my heart he has restored my spirit when god has brought me in that situation there's only one thing i ask of the lord i ask the lord lord purify me once again purify my mind purify my heart purify my spirit it was not an easy journey for me it was not an easy journey but by the help by the grace of god i was able to stand up stand up with confidence knowing that god has restored me you know there is a story also a favorite story of mine in the book of first samuel there was this um, man his name was ilkana and he has two wives penina and hannah now penina has plenty of children but hannah was not you know he was not blessed with even one and so somehow Penina always bullied Hannah. He bullied her because, you know, she has two and Hannah has none. And so it was really painful for Hannah. And Hannah was just always crying. Every time they go in the presence of the Lord, he will always cry and ask, Lord, please give me a son. And Lord, if you will give me a son, I will give him to you. I believe Hannah was so broken. He felt so incomplete. He felt so incomplete. Why? Because, you know, there's the comparison. But one thing that Hannah has, he has a humble spirit. And there was, there was this um, deep, tinag-anay nga pagpangayo sa ginoo. Nga Lord, this is what I desire, Lord. This is what I want. Please allow me. And one time, God listened to his prayer. He listened to his prayer and gave Hannah a son. So the Lord can restore us. You know, my, one of my favorite also character story in the Bible is David. You know, I believe all of us knew the, the story when, when he tried to, you know, um, how do you call it? Um, he was trying to manipulate um, Bathsheba. He was trying to manipulate. And then because of that, what happened? He brought or he asked the, the husband of Dave, uh, the husband of Bitsheba to go to war so that he will be killed. And so he was killed. And so he got married with Bathsheba. And what happened was they gave birth to a son. 
And what happened? The Lord also did not like it. And the Lord killed the baby because he was also angry because the baby was um, somehow a fruit of, you know, pagpakasala. Now what happened was David knew that the Lord was angry. And because David knew that he was angry, the Lord was angry, he humbled himself and asked the Lord to restore him. And God indeed restored him. God restored him. God's love will give us energy. Energy? Why? Because in Genesis chapter 7, there's a story, 17 I mean, Genesis chapter 17. There is a story between Abraham and Sarah. Okay? I'll just read a little of these um, verses. In verse 16, it says, And I will bless her, the Lord said to Sarah, And I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Verse 17. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I become a father at the age of 100? He thought. And how can Sarah have a baby when she is 90 years old? You see, the love of God will give us the energy despite our age, despite our limitation, Despite our deficiencies or whatever, God will give us the energy. We have one member in the church. I believe she's about 80 years old already. But she still has the energy like a teenager. She goes out to do Bible study. She do feeding, outreaches. She's never absent during Sunday, never absent during women's. She rides the tricycle, sometimes ride the motorcycle. You see, God's love will give us the energy. It will push us to our limitation. God's love give us, or God's love is always available. It is always available 24-7. God will not tell us, today is my rest day. No, you cannot call me. No, I cannot answer your, your request. No, I will not listen because today is my rest day. Tomorrow, yes, I can answer. I can give you your desire, but today, no. Remember, there was a time when Jesus worked or healed someone during Sabbath day. It was supposed to be a rest day on a Sabbath day. But then Jesus said, you know, he, he, he said a story. If, for example, he said, Jesus said, if, for example, we, you have one ship that is lost, will you not find for him? Will you not find for that ship just because it's a Sunday or just because it's a Sabbath day? No. That's why even even whatever time it is god is always available for us god's love do not, does not know any time limitation god's love will always be there for us and i can assure you of that you know uh, a lot of people are depressed and it saddened me. It really hurts me. It hurts to know that a lot of young people right now, it's just so easy for them to take their life. They don't know what's going on after death because there is judgment after death. And I'm telling you, I hope and I pray that for us who are listening right now, that will never come into our mind. Because probably, you know, taking your life here on earth is, okay, you're done on earth, but remember, there's always life after death. 
So then you are accountable and you have to reason to the Lord, to, to your maker, what made you, you know, what made you destroy your life? When the love of God is always there available. I believe the love of God is even um, um, being, being channeled to the pastors. There are pastors who can pray for you. There are pastors who can encourage you. You know, there are Christian friends who can lift you up. And so I'm encouraging you right now. Do not be discouraged when you have problem. Do not be embarrassed or do not be ashamed. You can always call your Christian friends. You can always call to the Lord because the Lord is always available. Last and final, the love of God magnifies. The love of God honors. He honors you. And many times, you cannot, you know, these things, you cannot, um, di kakabantay bitaw, di kakabantay ba nga, gi honor ka sa, da, sa ginoo. Pero if you look at your life, if you are faithful to the Lord, if you have reciprocated the love of God in your life by giving your commitment to the Lord, He will honor you. In what way? Giving you peace of mind. Giving you good family relationship. Giving you joy. Giving you good health. Giving provision. That is how God honors His people. And as we continue to wait, as we continue to experience the love of God, as we continue to honor the love of God in our lives, I believe, I believe, the Lord will reward you. So, mga kaigsuunan, I hope and I pray that you will come to understand the love of God. That you will come to understand that in whatever situation we are in right now, you are loved by the Lord. You are loved by the Lord. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for your love. We thank you so much, Lord, that you are always there. Lord, I pray for each and everyone who are listening right now. Lord, I do not know unsay ilang gikinahanglan, unsay ilang need karon, but I pray, Father, that you will reach out to them and Lord, provide whatever is their need. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus, that you will continue to work on their hearts, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.